If you're hiring multiple positions at once, you need to send out personalized, legally binding offer letters to each new hire. Any small mistake during this process can lead to catastrophic legal ramifications. Thankfully, Dropbox Sign makes the hiring process easy with its templates feature. All you have to do is set up a document once, and you can get signatures from multiple employees without the hassle of reformatting. In this video, I'll show you how to use templates in Dropbox Sign to send offer letters and contracts to a cohort of employees, ensuring a smooth and secure onboarding flow. If you want to follow along, make sure you have the latest version of Node.js installed on your system. You'll also need a free Dropbox Sign account. You can find a link to both of these items in the video description. The first thing I'll do is set up the template that I'll later send to each employee. I've already prepared a template as a PDF file in the GitHub repo, and I've linked it in the video description. I'll go ahead and download it and save it on my PC. On the Dropbox Sign homepage, I'll click on Templates in the left sidebar, and then I'll click Create Template and upload the file. Now it's time to add a signer role. In scenarios where multiple people need to sign the same document, each signer needs to be assigned a unique role that represents their relationship to the document they're signing. In this case, one person, the employee, signs each document. So, I'll create a new role named Employee and click on Next. On this screen, I can edit the fields of the template. See how the template has blank spaces for data that must be filled? To customize these fields, you'll need to tell Dropbox Sign where the fields are in the document and give those fields names so you can later access them from your code. On the left sidebar, I'll select Sender from the Signer dropdown. This corresponds to the fields that must be filled by the sender. I'll drag a text box and drop it on the first blank space. I'll stretch it a little to fill the blank space and tweak the font and text size from the right sidebar. If you have specific branding you want to add, you can incorporate that here as well. In the Merge Field text box, I'll write employee name. I'll access this text box in the code later on. I can also use the API ID field to refer to merge fields. Now I'll fill in the rest of the blank spaces. I'm going to fast forward while I follow the same process to fill in the rest of the blank spaces. If you're following along, you can use whatever merge field name you want, but you have to choose sender for each of the fields. If you want to use the same names as I did, Pause the video here and take note of the field names. I'll do the same for the next page. Once I'm finished adding all my fields, I need to create a space for the employee to sign. To do so, I'll choose Employee from the Signer dropdown and drag a signature field to the remaining blank space. I'll rename it Employee Signature. Because this field is tied to the employee role, I'll leave it blank so that the employee can sign it. I'll click on Next, provide a name for the template, and save it. I'll copy this template ID and keep it someplace safe. I can also look up the template ID anytime by clicking on the three vertical dots next to my template, selecting View Info, and then the More Information dropdown. Now, I'll go back to the home page and click API on the left sidebar. I'll click on Generate Key to create a new API key. Then, I'll give the key a name. Click on Generate Key and copy it. To keep things simple, a starter version of the Next.js app has already been created and is available in the GitHub repo linked in the video description. The app's front end is already built, and I'll use the Dropbox sign Node SDK to complete the back end. I'll clone the repo and move it into the directory. Then, I'll run npm install to install the dependencies. To start the server, I'll run npm run dev. If I navigate to HTTP localhost 3000, I'll see my app. Right now, the form does nothing since the backend isn't ready yet. So, let's write the code. 
First, I'll install the Dropbox Sign SDK. I'll create a .env file in the root of the project. This is where I'll store the API key. I'll name it DS API key and paste the key. I'll open Pages API Send Index.js file. I've defined a handler function that will handle the submission of the form and communicate with the Dropbox Sign API. To start writing the backend, I need to parse the data from the incoming form. This can be a complicated process, so I'll use the formidable library to make it easier. First, I'll import the library. Don't forget that you can copy all the code snippets used in this video from the GitHub repo. Now, I'll initialize the library. I'll parse the form from the request object inside a try-catch block. In case of an error, I'll log it and return an error message. Then, I'll parse the title, subject, and message fields from the form body. The signers field is an array of signer objects that are sent as a JSON string. So I'll use json.parse to convert it back to a JSON object. If any of the required fields are missing, I'll send an error response to the front end. Let's pause here and talk a little bit about how the signer's data is passed to the Dropbox Sign API. The API expects a signer list parameter, which must be an array. Each element of this array represents one instance of the template and holds the signer's data for that instance. Each instance must have a signer's entry and a custom fields entry. Since each document can have multiple signers, the signer's entry needs to be an array. In this case, each file is signed by only one signer, so the signer's entry is an array of a single element. The custom fields entry is also an array that holds the data to be added to the merge fields that I defined when creating the template. Each entry in this array should be in this format. To convert the signer's data from the form into the desired shape, I'll define a convert signer to list function like this. You'll notice that the deadline parameter is added by the code, as it's likely that the deadline to sign the contract will be the same for everyone in the cohort. If your situation is different, you can add the deadline field to the form so that it can be customized for each employee. Now, I'll import the Dropbox Sign API. In the handler function, I'll create an instance of the Signature Request API class that works as the gateway for communicating with the Dropbox Sign API. I'll construct the request data to be sent to the API and I'll paste my template ID here. By adding test mode true, I indicate that this is a test run and the document isn't legally binding. Without this parameter, Dropbox Sign will create a legally binding document which will consume credits. Now, I'll use signature request bulk send with template in a try catch block to make the API call. And with that, the back end is ready. Now it's time to test the app. Since the server is already running, I'll just refresh the page. I'll fill in the form by providing a title, subject, and message, which can be the same for everyone in the cohort. I'll add one more employee. Then I'll fill in the employee-specific details and click Submit. At this point, each employee in the cohort will receive an email asking them to sign the contract. When an employee opens the document, they'll see this warning since it's in test mode. The document will be pre-populated with the employee details. On the last page, the employee has the option to sign the document. They can type, draw, or upload their signature and submit the signed contract. And that's it. You've just onboarded a cohort of employees without breaking a sweat. To see the entire code for this tutorial, don't forget to check out the GitHub repository linked in the video description. As you've seen here, the Dropbox Sign API is a great way to seamlessly integrate e-signatures for a cohort of employees. You don't have to format every document manually, and you get a safe and secure document signing experience. Happy coding!